I'm Paul James from Auckland, New Zealand. My name's Stewie Firth and I'm riding from Australia. It's a speedway like you've never seen before. We're at the Isle of Wight, just across the water from Portsmouth, and it's been a big weekend here. They've just had Cow Sailing Week, and now it's the turn of the Sidecar Speedway Gold Cup from Smallbrook Stadium. Yes, hello and welcome. Well, we have just had a fantastic week of Speedway World Cup, but now it's the turn of the Sidecar. Calvin Tatum's joining me, Calvin. So it's Speedway, but not as we know it. That's right. Uh, there are some fundamental differences, uh, primarily that they actually go clockwise, not anti-clockwise, because there's two of them. There's a passenger with the rider. It's a thousand cc, not 500. And uh, the, the main uh, uh, similarity, of course, is that there are no brakes. And that's quite hard to believe when you consider how much power that these uh, these uh, these outfits have. But uh, yep, 20 crews here, and it really does uh, uh, have a mouthwatering uh, meeting in prospect. Well, let's take a look at the rules for tonight's meeting. Yes, 20 teams and each team has four heats. Top four point scorers go into the grand final if teams are level on points. It's a countback system with first, second, thirds and fourths. And if they're still level, it goes to a ballot. Yeah, and you've got to say this pairing of Darren Trelaw and Justin Plaisted, they are red hot favourites tonight. Nigh on unbeatable on uh, Sidecar Speedway, a three-time Australian champion. Very confident tonight. I spoke to him earlier and he reckons he's going to win, so look out for the rest. But, uh, yep, he's a tough customer. Well, let's take a look at some of the other riders and their passengers. Calvin, who stands out there? Well, I'm going to go uh, for the bottom three there. Eight, nine and ten. Uh, Matt Tyrrell and Sean Yates. Ivan Matthews and Mick Stace were joint British champions last year. And Scott Christopher and Trent Coppy, uh, they were Australian champions in 05. And uh, they're a young pairing that uh, have got plenty of potential. And looking further down the list here, you've got to say that uh, Gary Jackson and uh, Carl Blythe are uh, strong contenders, but also Grant Bond and Glenn Cox from Australia are, are, will be strong. And uh, the Kiwi representative tonight, Nick Edmonds and Paul James, will also uh, be competitive. Well, Calvin's going off to commentary now to join Nigel Pearson, but earlier he was out on the track checking out the bikes. We've seen plenty of solo speedway over the last few years. But tonight is all about Sidecar Speedway. This is the kit that's going to be on view tonight. And you've got to say that they are hugely powerful bits of uh, equipment. 1,000cc, not 500 as, as with a Solo. You've got the three wheels and obviously and a bigger frame to accommodate the passenger. Up front, the driver will sit here in a kneeling position. And on the side here, the passenger will hang right off the side as they go through the corners, transferring his weight backwards and forwards to make sure that they get the right speed and the right grip at the right moments. The combination of the driver and passenger, hugely important. Speeds of up to 100 miles an hour will be achieved here this evening, and uh, a sensational show is in prospect. And me for one, I can't wait for it to begin. Well, Calvin's gone and joined Nigel Pearson in the commentary booth. Thanks, Sophie. Yes, good evening. Welcome to the Smallbrook Stadium on the Isle of Wight, uh, a beautiful part of the world, it has to be said. A very pleasant journey across the Solent today from Portsmouth in uh, beautiful sunshine. And here, Smallbrook Stadium, which first stage speedway in the Conference League over a decade ago, and now regulars in the Premier League, which is the second tier of conventional speedway racing here, the Isle of Wight Islanders race every Tuesday evening. And not having a bad season either. They've discovered some great riders down the years, but here, it's all about the track racing gold trophy for sidecars. This ultimately is the biggest sidecar speedway competition in the world. No doubt about that. It's the first time that it's been staged on track. Last year it was due to be held in Germany but was rained off. And now this is the first of a three-year contract. So whatever happens, it's going to be here for three years. Not necessarily here at the Isle of Wight, but it will be on track for three years. Uh, and uh, let's hope it's a big success and a, a rare look at sidecar speedway for myself Kelv but uh, you've made you so made your way up here into commentary pretty quickly I'm quite impressed because you're not out of breath either you're obviously <laughs> in a pretty good shape these days I am indeed yeah probably the best shape I've been in for about the last six and uh, probably <laughs> due to the fact that I stay off these sort of bits of kit nowadays but uh, yeah this is a terrific meeting in prospect 
Absolutely. Trelaw and Playstead then, the uh, pre-meeting favourites from Australia off the inside. Cossa and Wilson off gate number two in blue. Gate three in white, it's Cave and Hogan. And Leenberg and Williams go off the outside. Now, Leenberg is Dutch and Williams from Great Britain, but Leenberg rides on a German licence, and you can see why they're favourites straight away, can't you? Trelaw and Playstead make a, a fast getaway, and they are kicking on down the back straight, looking very, very quick indeed. And look at the speed with which they go into that turn. 1,000cc engines as opposed to the conventional 500cc that you see for the solos. And they aren't just winning this race, they're carving it up. They're uh, three times Aussie national title winners. They've won numerous state championships. And, Kelvin, you can see why. Yeah, fabulous start there from da Darren Talor off the inside. Absolutely flew out the start and the pace it's showing out front is just incredible the partnership he has with Justin Playstead really the bike working beautifully off that banking out of that turn there they're away and clear it's beautiful banking isn't it here there to be fair because they've only had the banking on the third and fourth turn here at the Isle of Wight for the last two or three seasons but let's watch them now as they go into that banking here uh, the uh, Trelaw and Playstead combination look at them glide off that banking it's beautiful it's like how you used to race at Bradford Topsell Stadium Kelvin yeah absolutely very similar indeed and they're using to get that extra bit of kick off that tour corner but a great opening ride there for Placed and uh, Trelaw. Absolutely, Placed and Trelaw, they, uh, they take the uh, victory with the uh, blue helmet colours Mark Cossa and Andy Wilson getting second, third place to Mick Cave and Dave Hogan and uh, Rilof uh, Lindberg and David Williams, they trail in last there. Lindberg, as we say, riding on a German licence, but Trelaw and Playstead will be delighted with that start. Darren Trelaw, 37 years old, he's a mechanic in Sydney, New South Wales, and Justin Playstead is a fencing constructor from Adelaide. So uh, all these boys, you know, you've got to bear in mind that they've put their necks on the line, but they've got a day job to go to as well. There's the result. Trelaw and Playstead, three points for them. Cosser and Wilson get a couple. Cave and Hogan for Great Britain won. Lindbergh and Williams get zero from race number one. We should just uh, remind you all that it is conventional speedway scoring. Three points for a win, two for second, one for third, nothing for finishing last. We've got uh, 20 pairings here, 20 crews, and let's look at Trelaw and Playstead, who were absolutely dominant there. Can anybody stop them tonight? They are superb. They are indeed, and it was a fabulous start from the inside. The bike hooked up. The passenger there standing prone over the rear wheel. The bike just fired him into the first turn. And already at this early stage in the meeting, this in the race rather, he's pulled well clear. And really, this was a high-speed demonstration from the Australian pair. Mark Crosser and Andy Wilson were doing sterling work back in second place. But the race was all about Trelaw and Playstead. And they've thrown down a real marker for the rest of the crews here tonight. Let's get some reaction to heat number one. Here's Sophie. Yes, thank you very much. Darren, we can see why you guys are favourite tonight. Yeah, um, you know, there's 16 riders, 20 riders out there and anyone can do it, but you know, we've put a lot of preparation into this um, you know, with the current Australian champions and the last couple of seasons we've had a good run, so hopefully we continue it tonight and uh, have a win. Dan, I know that you feel that this has been a long time overdue, this meeting, don't you? Yeah, I've been waiting for this a long time. I've been riding for 20 years now and um, you know, I've always wanted to have something like this and uh, it's finally come, so I hope it takes off and uh, we'll make the most of it. Well, the track yesterday was very dry, wasn't it? Have they got it in a good condition today? Yeah, they have. It's, um, yeah, it's a waste of time practice during the day, really. You know, that uh, when it's that hot, you just you never keep the moisture in the track and that's what happened. It just kept on drying out. and uh, Yeah, but tonight the moisture's there and the track's beautiful. All right, good luck tonight. Back over to Calvin and Nigel. Well, I can tell you the track surface has been prepared by uh, Gerald Richter, who uh, is uh, very experienced at Swindon and Arena Essex, and also Peter Thurgood as well. Good to see Peter still involved at uh, the veteran stage of his career, shall we say. And look at that track surface, perfectly prepared. I think, Kelvin, as opposed to solo speedway, I think they, they really have to tyre pack it very, very firm uh, because of the fact that they've got extra weight on the track tonight with the sidecars. Yeah, because the, the sidecars really dig into the base of the track and actually make uh, big ruts in it uh, and that's the last thing they need to be happening it is a little bit wavy out there but they have ploughed plenty of water on all throughout the afternoon a really hot here, hot day here on the Isle of Wight and uh, as Darren Talor was saying in his interview their track conditions nigh on perfect for tonight's meeting well, there's no qualification as such for this meeting. All the riders, or should I say the drivers and their passengers, have been nominated by the FIM, the Federation of International Motorcycles, the world's governing body. It is the FIM Track Racing Gold Trophy. 
Uh, and it is regarded as the world final, the biggest meeting in the world. We can't emphasise that enough. Cheatham and Williams off the inside. Whitelam and Whale off two. Wilson and Owen off three. Tyrrell and Yates off the outside. An all British lineup here in. Uh, he oh, the two the under Problem at the start there. Yeah. Is that a burnt out clutch for Hans yeah, Gilbert? Def definitely. Cheatham's got problem with his clutch. As soon as he revved the engine up there, the, the clutch, uh, the bike just dragged itself forward. Referee really has got no option here but to exclude him. Yeah, the exclusion light will come on there. You can clearly see it again. I feel for him there, you know, because uh, they've obviously done all the preparation work and then uh, the uh, the bike there just at the moment, he needed it to, to sit still. It's dragged him straight into the tapes. Well, you've got to feel sorry for them, haven't you? Craig mm. Cheatham is uh, a managing director in Birmingham, so he sits there with his uh, whistle and flute on on a Monday morning behind the office desk and look what he does for a hobby at a weekend. It's bizarre, isn't it? It really is. And Kevin Williams as well, uh, who is a motorcycle accessory salesman from Shrewsbury in Shropshire. And I can tell you that Richard Moore and Robert Winspear, a Great Britain-New Zealand combination, they'll be coming in to replace them. And uh, it is so frustrating, isn't it, for them when uh, they've made all this preparation. And, you know, you've been down in the pits earlier as well, Kelvin. You can, you can tell what this means to these guys because... It is the biggest sidecar meeting in the world. Absolutely, and uh, everybody has put their heart and soul into this meeting, and uh, that's a desperate way to start the meeting. Craig Treatman is, uh, is certainly well, is good, one right. that uh, he would have been hoping for a big performance coming out of the inside, but now the skeleton crew here. Why do they call them that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well there you go. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Really, it's brilliant, brilliant, yeah. But uh, what an opportunity for Richard Moore and Robert Winsper here because they've got the favoured inside start. If they can reproduce the sort of getaway that Darren Trelaw got uh, in heat one, and who knows, they might be able to pick up three points here, Nigel. Both 39 years of age, and Rob Winspear is a panel beater. Will he be an opposition beater tonight, Kelvin? <laughs> well, a very good chance for him here, Nigel, because uh, off the inside, who knows, it, um, uh, it could just be what they need. But, yeah, coming in at the last minute, They've got to grasp this opportunity with both hands, or four hands, is it? Uh... Let me ask you this, Calvin. Yeah. In your experience, you know, you, you've done all forms of uh, conventional speedway, if you like, speedway, long track, grass track. Have you actually seen much of, uh, of this experience, sidecar speedway on the grass in particular? Because yeah. I know that the, the big sidecar meetings in the past have always been held on the grass. Yeah, I've seen plenty of big grass track uh, outfit racing. Of course, all the British championships I competed in, uh, there was always a run con in conjunction with the sidecar mm. um, uh, um, boys. And uh, they're always hugely exciting, you know, and you'd always hang around for the big final at the end of the day. Well, the grass trap meetings, you have solos and, and, and sidecars yeah, all in one day. Exactly. You know, it's quite a festival, isn't it? Yes, Particularly it is. on bank holidays around the country. Absolutely, well. absolutely. Absolutely. So there's the lineup then for heat number two here at the Isle of Wight, Small Brook Stadium. Great to be here at the Isle of Wight, it really is. And off uh, gate number three, a wonderful start from the riders in white, uh, Rob Wilson and Mickey Owen, and they've got to the first turn straight away. And uh, second place now, Matthew Tyrrell and Sean Yates. Good stuff from them. And in third place right now is Paul Whitelam and Ian Whale. And the reserves who came in, Moore, Moore and Winspear, they're trailing off at the back. But up front now, and setting a fair old pace, Rob Wilson and Nicky Owen. Wilson, the, uh, the driver here, and uh, Nicky Owen, the passenger. And we have to really grasp here, because no doubt you, like us here in the commentary box, are fairly new to this sport. You have to realise the, the, the cooperation between passenger and driver has to be second to none here, Kelvin. Yeah, hugely important. And what is also significant here is that Rob Wilson is actually on a grass track outfit. That means that he's got rear suspension, quite a different geometry to that bike. And I've got to say, I spoke to him before the meeting started, Nigel, and he didn't reckon his chances much here. I don't know whether he was just playing it down, because his performance here in his opening ride is really, really good. He flew out the tapes, and he's got this one sewn up. Yeah, he's looking quick here. There's a battale here with uh, Paul Whitelam and Ian Whale battling away with the reserves. That's Richard Moore and Rob, Win Rob Winspear in red. So that's a battle at the back, but the victory goes to uh, the, ride at the, uh, the crew in white, Rob Wilson and Nicky Owen. That's a good start from them, and they get a generous round of applause here from the Isle of Wight public and people from uh, surrounding areas as well that have made the journey here today. A good crowd here at Smallbrook Stadium, and this is very much a summer venue, which probably doesn't surprise you. 
Yes, uh, I've done several tours in Australia in the winters in my speedway career, and whenever there was a solo meeting, there would always be sidecars there. And the advantage the, uh, the Australian crews have is that they just do speedway. They don't do grass track and speedway, so they are fundamentally dialled into this type of racing. And uh, there's a lot more of it, and they do it year-round there. Well, let's acknowledge the, the part that has been played of Paul Pinfold down the years in the 80s and the early 90s. Paul Pinfold went to Australia and came back like a one-man crusade to try and promote spe uh, Sidecar Speedway in the UK. And Paul Miller took it on. And now the Isle of Wight Speedway promotion, Dave Pavitt. And uh, Martin Newnham, who uh, has actually been a competitor until recently, he's retired now, but this is race number three, and it's a good start off. Oh! Bit of contact in the early stages. Look how close they go in that first turn, and Scott Christopher and Trent Coppy come clear the Australian duo. Second place, Peter Lloyd and Terry Madley. Third is Ivan Matthews at mixed stage right now, and at the back, Nick Edmonds and uh, also Paul James. But when we look at the lineup here, we have the Australian champions from last year, Scott Christopher and Trent Coppy, and Ivan Matthews and Mick Stace. They are Great Britain champions as well. It was very tight in that first turn. Yeah, really tough first corner there, and the loser was actually the, the, the Kiwi crew there of Nick Evans and Paul James. They got squeezed out and forced to the back. But out front, the young pairing of Scott Christopher and... Uh, Trent Coppy. Trent Coppy, rather, sorry. They're yeah, absolutely flying. You've got to say that they show terrific speed away from the tapes and they're flying the sort of speed that Darren Trelaw and John Place, that Justin Place will be potentially very concerned about. Battle here between uh, the uh, duo Ivan Matthews and Mick Stace and Nick Edmonds and Paul James as they go up the inside. It's going to uh, really uh, shape up nicely in the closing stages. Every point could prove crucial here. No doubt about the race leaders, Christopher and Coppy, but there's a battle at the back there. I think they've just done enough in blue. They have. Matthews and Stace have just done enough there to see off the challenge of Nick Edmonds and Paul James. And I'll tell you what, it's a lively start here at the Isle of Wight, the Small Brick Stadium tonight in ride on the Isle of Wight. And it's Scott Christopher and Trent Coppy. Now, I've got to tell you that Darren Trelaw and Justin Playstead were the favourites before the meeting. They made a flying start in Heat 1, but I can't wait to see it when they meet Scott Christopher and Trent Coppy, because for me, they look just as quick there, Kel. They did, they were very impressive indeed, and I've got to say that uh, those two outfits certainly showing a lot of speed. Here the results. Christopher and Coppy, the winners, Lloyd and Madley second, and Matthews and Stace were third, with Edmonds and James at the back. If you're trying to follow the meeting, it, it is quite simple. 20 pairs, 20 crews in action tonight. Three points for a win, two for second, one for third, and nothing for finishing last here. Here's the start, Kelvin. Yeah, fabulous start from uh, Scott Christopher and Trent Coppy on the inside. Really just really far away, like uh, Darren Trelaw and Justin Place they did earlier. But here is this, all this squeezing and pushing, and it's the Kiwi crew right in the sandwich there that get forced out. Ivan oh. Matthews up the inside, literally forces him wide. And then Peter Lloyd there hangs on to second spot. Now Ivan Matthews has forced that hole up the inside and dives in there and grabs hold of that third place. Got to feel a little bit for the Kiwi crew there because they did nothing wrong. They just found themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. Look how hard they hit each other there. Fortunately, none of the outfits tip over because I have seen that and that really is spectacular. But a tough first corner, but this race was all about Christopher and Coppy. They were away. Superb style there of Christopher and Coppy, and here's Sophie. Thank you. Well, Scott, showing why you're very highly rated there. Yeah, it was good to get out there and get the first one over and done with. Um, probably work out a little bit more set up for the next one and hopefully do a little bit better, keep it a bit smoother. Obviously, for you guys, you had the frustration of Germany last year where you came all the way over and it just rained the whole time, didn't it? It must be great for you to be here and get the meeting going. Yeah, it's definitely good to get you know a meeting of this size happening. Um, Germany last year was very disappointing, such a long way, but you know, hopefully everything goes well tonight. So the aim is the final? Yeah, definitely. Definitely want to be there and anything can happen from there. All right, best of luck to you. Thank you. Over to Calvin and Nigel. Thanks, Sophie. Let me try and bring you up to date with the situation with the first Ben Bunching here in this meeting, because you know what I'm like, Kelvin, don't you? Oh, I do. I get criticised for having an opinion. I'm sorry about on that. But anyway, and on and on. contact apparently is not allowed when you're under power, and that means that you can make contact when entering a corner, but contact or pushing is not allowed when exiting a corner. Now, they're in the rules, but let's just make it clear here. It is at the discretion of the referee and the, and the clerk of the course. It's not just the referee, it's the clerk of the course as well who can have a say 
in decisions that are made in first bend incidents. Now, I can tell you the referee tonight is a, a name well known to Speedway supporters, Petra Ondrasik, a former rider, and the clerk of the course is Paul Applin, who has been uh, experienced at the Millennium Stadium at Cardiff and the British Grand Prix, and uh, pool supporters will be well acquainted with him. So they're the guys that can make the decisions in the first turn. But it was no quarter asked and no quarter given there in that last race, Kel. No, absolutely not. Unfortunately, the contact happened, happened entering the corner. It didn't happen exiting it, so no reason for the referee or the clerk of the course to get involved in heat uh, three. But uh, here, gate heat four, an interesting line-up here. Jackson and Blythe off the inside, Bond and Cox from Australia off two, Smith and Pugh off three, and Bickley and Benfield. Paul Bickley and James Benfield go off the outside. The difference between this and conventional solo speedway, of course, contact in the first turn in solo speedway generally means that somebody falls off. Yep. Here, you stay on the bikes. You do indeed, unless it gets really exciting and they tip over. Oh! More Grant Bond here. and Glenn Cox again, straight into the tapes. I'm, uh, I'm sure that's going to be another exclusion. Well, they're trying it... a little bit of kidology here to try and pretend that everything's OK. But I'm afraid that uh, Grant Bond and Glenn Cox, you can see it clearly here, gate two. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Guilty as charged, I think. Right, and, so. Uh, Mr. Andrasik puts the blue exclusion light on and Grant Bond from New South Wales and Glenn Cox I also do... from New South Wales. Sure. They're out of the race and it's a long way to come to prepare and have your practice on Friday and you've come all the way from New South Wales and then all of a sudden, bang, the bike lets you down, you're in the tapes and you've got to go back to the pits and watch it from there. Yeah, terribly disappointed for that crew, but you've got to say that uh, those are the sort of things they really needed to have made sure that they were right, but we've got another reserve outfit coming out here and Roger Wind and Ben Goddard, uh, the second reserve, they're coming out. Well, and uh, here we see he's not probably the sort of stature we're used to seeing on a solo. Um, one or two, uh, ex mean, one or two extra what? kilos kicking about there, but you never know. That's what sidecar <laughs> racing may be all about. But uh, <laughs> certainly, Mr. Wynn there, a fine figure of a man. Are you sure? Roger Wynn and Ben Goddard then here. Let's just underline the situation. These boys are here enjoying themselves, and they've got day jobs to go to on Monday morning as well. Go, Roger. And, uh, yeah, Roger Wynn and Ben Goddard are uh, all set for action in heat number four. So, down the back well, side they are, building up to the action, and this this arena here at Smallfront Stadium, we can see down disconsolately on the centre green, Kelvin, yeah, you just pointed it out, Grant sure. Bond and Glenn Cox all on the way back to the pits. Exactly, a huge blow, they've come all the, round the way, all the way around the world to race here, but they were also one of the pre-meeting favourites. These Australian crews came here with very high expectations, they've given themselves an awful lot to work to do. But Steve, Miss, Steve Smith here, I know him very well from my grass straight days, he's been around for a long, long time, in actual fact won't actually admit to his age, but I know that uh, he's done plenty of racing and uh, certainly this uh, this uh, this crew is uh, is a very competitive one, and one that we'll be looking to do very well here this evening. But uh, be interesting to see how the reserve pairing here get on. 22 pairing of Roger Wynn and Ben Goddard. But all these crews now are desperate to get on with this and get their first ride out of the way. Yep, here it is, race number four then, and uh, the duo in white, Steve Smith and Carl Pugh, are left at the start. They've managed to get the machine going again now. Goodness only knows what happened there. It might have been an electrical fault or they forgot to turn their fuel on or whatever. But the lead now is with Gary Jackson and Carl Bly. They're kicking on. Second place is Paul Bickley and James Benfield. Third is Roger Wynn and Ben Goddard, the uh, reserves, of course, who've come in here for Grant Bond and Glenn Cox. But kicking on down that back straight and looking oh so quick is uh, Gary Jackson and Carl Blythe, and you can see just how much quicker they are, particularly down the straight, than conventional solo speedway. These guys are on 1,000 cc engines with no brakes. And uh, no brakes, and I can remember... Oh, Gary Jackson's had a problem there. Bikes run out of steam, whether the chains come off or they've got drama, but uh, that's desperately disappointing for them because they had that race pretty much sewn up. That's gifted the opportunity now for Paul uh, Bickley and James Benfield to hit the front, and uh, that's... Uh, Something that's going to be gifting them the three points, but desperate luck there for Gary Jackson and Carl Blythe. They can't believe it. 
To be fair, Carl Blythe put his hand up pretty quickly to warn the guys around him that they packed up. But coming round to take an unexpected victory now, Paul Bickley and James Benfield take the chequered flag. Steve Smith and Carl Pugh have come through to get the better of uh, win and got out the reserves. But Paul Bickley and James Benfield will be delighted with that. They're from uh, Workington in uh, Cumbria, or Paul Bickley is from Workington in Cumbria, and uh, James Benfield based in the Isle of Wight, so they're a fair distance apart. They've won the Northern Championship at Workington in 2001, board a champion in 2003 as well. It's a great start for Bickley and Benfield. Remember, this is the world final of Sidecar Speedway, the biggest event in the world on Sidecar Speedway. It's the FIM Track Racing Gold Trophy. I'm told the trophy is worth about £17,000. Bickley and Benfield, the race winners. Smith and Pugh were second. Third place goes to Wynn and Goddard, who are the reserves, replacing Bond and Cox. And Jackson and Blythe, right out of luck there. But Bickley and James Benfield teamed together and said, thank you very much, we'll take full advantage. Yeah, but once again from the start here, Jackson and Blythe straight into the first turn. They really made full use of that inside start. Round the outside, you can see there, Paul Bickley and James Benfield, they slot back into second spot, and that's where they hang on to. Once again, Steve Smith off the start there. I don't know what happened, whether it jumped out of gear or whether there was an electrical problem, like you said, Nigel, but they did have a problem. But believe it or not, they came back into this race to finish second, so good fortune for them. They came uh, good at... Uh, Gary Jackson and Carl Blythe had that mechanical problem down the back straight. Track looks superb, to be fair, Carl, and it's lovely and smooth, isn't it? Uh, I don't know if it's lovely and smooth. They are bouncing around a little bit, but there's a good top dressing of shale throughout. You can see the dirt kicking off the back tyre there off the outfit. There you can see um, uh, Gary Jackson's bike, uh, outfit packing up and gifting the win there to Paul Bickley and James Benfield. Speaking Ooh. of Paul Bickley, he's with Sophie. Yeah, thank you, Nigel. Paul, that's the kind of luck you need to win this, isn't it? That's right, yeah. I mean, we, we had an outside gate, so it was bad to start off with. But uh, we managed to get behind Gary on the first turn. But unfortunately for him, and lucky for me, he lost his chain. Are you enjoying being here? Because I know you were saying, you know, you're just going to give it your best shot tonight. That's right, yeah. We're really enjoying it. We're really pumped up for tonight. So hopefully on the inside of the gate and the next one we can do it's a bit better. But well, your original aim, wasn't it, for the was for the top six, but obviously if it keeps on happening like this, you could be in that final. Well, that's right, yeah. We've just got to keep it going, race, race by race, and see how we get on. All right, well, we want to bring it up there, so good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Back over to the guys. Thanks, so. Well, I can tell you that qualification for this uh, tournament tonight, the Sidecar Gold Trophy, basically it was based on national championships from last year or this year. Australia represented by their one to five, all told. Darren Chalor and Justin Playstead, we've already seen, currently holding number one spot for Australia. And they'll be looking to defend that by becoming world number one tonight as well. New Zealanders Nick Edmonds and Paul James, they're the New Zealand champions. And for Britain, Gary Jackson and Carl Blythe, Matt Tyrrell and Sean Yates and Ivor Matthews and Mick Stace. They lead the way. But here, Duncan Tolhurst and Paul Whiteland Jr. You can see um, they live a fair fair distance apart so I'm sure when they come together at weekends for competitions like this they really do make the most of it and it's a real carnival atmosphere here Kelvin and, and, and lots of families here enjoying themselves they're, they've been camping here as well over on the cricket pitch over on the far side behind the clubhouse as well really has been a wonderful weekend for everybody here as we look at the lineup for heat number five off the inside it's uh, Ricky Laycock and Jody Donovan off gate number two in blue Duncan Tolhurst and Paul Whiteham Jr Gate number three, Stuart Firth and Darren Fleming. And off the outside, John Hiscock and Gareth Bemister as well. Heat number five. And uh, plenty of interest for the British boys here, particularly off the outside as we look towards the first turn. A wonderful swoop from the guys in white, Stuart Firth and Darren Fleming. It's not easy off gate three, particularly in the early stages, but I like that first turn, the way it's so banned, but it's heartbreak for Hiscock and Bemister. They pulled up with bike problems, but what a wonderful start from Firth and Fleming off gate three. They went uh, into the uh, banking on that first and second turn, used it superbly, but they're coming under a bit of pressure here now from Laycock and Donovan, Kelvin. Yeah, good race out front. The two Aussie crews really going at it. You're dead right, Nigel. What terrific a race here. What a start there from Firth and Fleming flew out of gate three and uh, Laycock and Donovan are not really um, uh, they really are giving it everything they've got and Duncan Tolhurst and Paul Whiteland Jr. they're just trying to hang on in third place yep 
Good stuff here from Stuart Firth and Darren Fleming. Oh. Coming round the outside is Laycock and Donovan. They almost lost a bit of ground there because Tolhurst and Whiteland Jr. were there ready to try and pounce. But leading the way is Firth and Fleming here now in the last lap of heat number five of the track racing gold trophy. 1,000cc sidecar speedway machines, no brakes. Look how low the passenger goes. Millimetres off the surface with your elbow. It really is unbelievable stuff, and it's well done to Stuart Firth and Darren Fleming. And that, I think, was possibly the best race of the night so far with the five that we've had. Commiserations to John Hiscock and Gareth Bemister, the uh, British duo there who pulled up with bike problems. And Stuart Firth and Darren Fleming from Australia led the way, but they were under a little bit of pressure there, particularly from Laycock and Donovan. And the fans appreciating the entertainment that they're seeing here on the Isle of Wight tonight. This is Smallbrook Stadium on the Isle of Wight. Firth and Fleming, the winners. Laycock and Donovan uh, getting second place. And third, Tolhurst and uh, Whitelam Jr. And Hiscock and Berister, we're told, suffered a puncture there. And unfortunately, it happens to the best of them. There's absolutely nothing he can do about it. No, tough luck for John Hiscott and Gary Bemister, but what a super start there from Stuart Firth and Darren Fleming. Look how close they got there with Laycock and Donovan in the first turn. As you say, uh, Nigel, this was a terrific race, and Laycock really did lay it down and chase him all the way for four laps. But you've got to say that Firth and Fleming hailed fast around the outside in that first turn and really went for it. And uh, Laycock, but look at the dirt coming off there, and he's getting filled in. He's had to go for his roll off there, Laycock, to make sure that he can see where he's going. But a great effort for the, for the crew in second place, but a terrific start for Firth and Fleming. Just look at the passengers here. I'm trying to... I'm trying to work out. I'm trying to work out who's the most courageous, or is it Barmy? Is it the, the driver or the passenger? Well, I, I've done the passenger in bit, and I can I'm tell you that. I'm sure is, you have. That is you Barmy. are Barmy. That is Barmy. <laughs> <laughs> Once and only once. Sophie's in the pit. Sophie, bring us up to date. Who's more Barmy, the driver or the passenger? I'll ask Stuart, shall I? They're just saying, who's more Barmy, the driver or the passenger? Oh, definitely the passenger. I wouldn't do it for quids. <laughs> It is amazing, isn't it? It looks really scary when you watch it from here. That was a great race, though. You were under some pressure. It was under big pressure. We only put that bike together during the week. It was made out of bits and pieces out of people's houses in the UK. It's the first time I rode it, so it went all right. That's amazing, isn't it? You've been riding, what, for 16 years? Never missed a season, but the first time riding outside of Australia. Yeah, that's correct. That's, that's correct. I, um, I do a lot of it. So you're enjoying it, though? I'm loving the UK. I love the track, too. It's a great place to be. Brilliant. All right, best of luck to you. Well, we're going to a break now, so join us in a few minutes. league in the world and it's seen many changes now 72 clubs kick off a new season a new challenge for automatic promotion or the playoffs sky sports will be there with more live games than ever before a coca-cola football league double with bet 365 tomorrow 1 p.m sky sports 2 and sky sports hd2 Every person here had athlete's foot, but they treat the problem and protect themselves from further flare-ups with Dactarin Dual Action Spray Powder, so they can keep going and going and going and going and going. Dactarin for active feet. If you hurry, you can get 0% finance over four years on nearly every model in the Renault range. As we said, nearly every model in the Renault range. Please let me introduce myself. Please allow us to introduce you to the making of Sympathy for the Devil on DVD, a fly on the wall documentary by Jean-Luc Godard. Free this weekend, only in the Sunday Times.
Well, welcome back to the Sidecar Speedway Gold Cup in the Isle of Wight. Let's just have a look at the table, see how it stands at the moment. So the top 10 are Darren and Justin. And then we have Rob Wilson and Nikki Owens. Got Christopher and Trent Kopp, Paul Bickley and James Benfield. And they... So the top four there are the ones that qualify for the final. But now I'm joined by John Hazley. Thank you very much for coming in to chat to me. Obviously, you're three times British champion. What's it like being here today? It's good. It's a bit nervous. I, I could have been here riding today, but we decided to retire. So um, we've missed it, I'm afraid. We, we wanted to ride in a World Championship, but we just packed up a year too early, really. Yeah, because you were going to ride in Germany last year, weren't you? Unfortunately, the one that was rained off. That's right. Went all the way there, but it was rained off. And I think we had two days out there and it just didn't stop raining, so it didn't happen. How much does it mean to the guys in an event like this? Oh, it means everything to them. I mean, the Australians, are, they, they keep coming over, they want to win, and, and they are the favourites to win, I'm afraid. But, um, yeah, everyone wants to win. It means a you know, great deal. The great thing is, as well, all the riders have been raving about the track tonight. Yeah, the track's good. I mean, yesterday it wasn't very good. It's a bit dusty, but they, they practised in the afternoon, so it didn't really suit them. But they put plenty of water on there now, and it's riding really good. So an event like this makes them feel like they're being properly recognised now? Oh, for sure. This is what we wanted for about five years now, and now we've actually got on Sky, and hopefully we can go forward again. So they're going to keep the event going in the same type of format then for a few years, see how it goes? Yes, next year it's supposed to be in Adelaide, so it should be good. Fantastic. Yeah. So who are your favourites for tonight? S uh, Scotty Christopher's one of my favourites, but I think um, Darren Trelaw will win it. They do seem to be an awesome team, don't they? Everybody they rates them very, very highly. Yeah, they're very good. They're very smooth, and like you say, as a team, they are very good. It's obviously it's much bigger in Australia, isn't it? It is. It's massive. I mean, over here, our main sport is grass track for sidecars, and we've only been doing it sort of about five years, because the Australians... That's all they do is speedway, so they are a lot more, you know, better than, than what we are, really. Well, it has been a fantastic win. I have to say, for me personally, having never seen it before as well, it's incredible to watch. And they were having a debate earlier as well about, you know, who, who was more crazy, right. the drivers or the passengers. But I think, you know, unanimously, it's got to be a passenger, hasn't it? Well, you, you've got to work as a team as well. You, you, you've got to rely so much on the passenger, because if he's not there, then you can't do, you know, what you want to do. So it is, you know, really good teamwork. Did you actually ever try and be a passenger there? No, I've never done it, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do it. <laughs> it does take a lot of guts to do something it like does. that, doesn't it? You are definitely a, a different breed of person to be a passenger. There's not many passengers that can do driving yeah. or vice versa. But, yeah, it's, you're, you're born to it, I think. Well, thanks very much, John, for chatting to me. Let's go enjoy our commentary team of Calvin and Nigel. I'll tell you what, Calv, I didn't know next year's event was in Adelaide, did you? No, I didn't, but... Uh, Business class or first class? Oh, I think, uh, well, either will do, but uh, fortnight down there sounds very nice. Absolutely. Very pleasant indeed, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm a big uh, sidecar speedway fan, Calv. Let's take a look at the standings after five races here at the Isle of Wight. Darren Chalor and Justin Playstead, basically every uh, every partnership here, every crew has had one ride each. Chalor and Playstead, uh, Wilson and Owen, Christopher and Coppy, and Bickley and Benfield. They're the race winners so far. And as you can see, every duo has had one ride each so far, Firth and Fleming. And at the end of the night, it will be the top four scorers. There you see Matthews and Stace, Tolhurst and Whitelam Jr. and Cave and Hogan. One point each, and uh, already, even at this early stage, the uh, the bottom six there have got a lot of work to do to get anywhere near the top four because they only have four rides each, and um, that is a slight a slight anomaly in this system. They don't meet each other. They don't actually meet each other. So, um, for That's example, not, not every crew meets each other. Exactly, does it? So there is a. Chalor and Playstead avoid Christopher and Coppy, don't they? But I'm yeah. sure there's a good chance they'll meet in the final, Kel. Well, yeah, particularly on the evidence of their first rise. But here's a bit of drama here for Paul Whitelam and Ian Whale. Um, a bit of problems with there. They're having to pull the bike back on compression there to try and give it a push now. They've got to remember that this is quite a heavy bit of kit. There's another um, machine coming out here yeah, as I know, well, Kelvin. I do know that after the parade they had a problem with the fuel pump coming out of uh, overflow on the uh, fuel tank. Well, I'll tell you what, to be fair, Kelvin, in, in sidecar speedway like this, we mentioned earlier, all these boys have got day jobs to go to on Monday morning, apart from the Australians who are probably travelling home, but there's, oh. not, there's not many that uh, there's not many of the boys that can actually have a spare piece of kit. And um, just a big concern there as they rolled over the centre green of 
over a few of our TV wires and microphones. But anyway, there we are. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so um, there they are, Whiteland and Whale, and it's good that they've got a spare piece of equipment to come in and take their place in the lineup. And yep. uh, his cock and Bemister here Nigel, as well. Nigel, big race here for Gary Jackson and Carl Blythe. Uh, they got a good chance here tonight to do well. They had that problem in the opening race, and they'll be looking to bounce back here, but not easy coming out of gate four. We've seen gate four really, they find it very difficult to get across, but Gary Jackson's got to pull something out of the hat here. Yep, Jackson and Bly then looking to make up for lost time here. Heat number six it is. This is Sidecar Gold Cup Speedway, the world final, and it's tight in that first turn. How close do they want? Oh, look at yellow. Jackson. Jackson and Bly, you said it, Kelvin. They needed a good one. They went high into the banking, and they got a massive drive off of that first and second turn and blasted clear of their rivals. The rest were battling away, showing the machines at each other. But full credit to the riders in yellow and black, or the driver and passenger, I should say, Jackson and Bly. Yeah, fabulous opening lap there from Jackson and Bly. And you've got to say, it's also been a terrific effort for Paul Whiteland and Ian Whale. But bad luck has hit Nick Edmonds and Jill Paul James. They're out of it. But once again, Gary Jackson now, he's hit the front. He's got to keep his fingers crossed and his bike doesn't let go of him this time, he needs the points. Gary Jackson uh, pushing clear here, and an impressive ride to say the least. Jackson, the 43-year-old from Chester, and his partner Bly, who lives in Leicester, they are kicking on here. It was a wonderful start, blasting away from the outside line, and that banking proved significant for those two, Kelvin. Yeah, he worked it beautifully, he ran right up the top and swept down it, and I was able to power past all the other outfits and hit the front. And uh, there, Paul Whiteland, they're doing sterling work in second place. But a great victory there to Jackson and Blythe. They'll be delighted. Gary Jackson and Carl Blythe get their first points on the board and put themselves right in contention for a place in the top four. They started off with heartbreak in their first outing when they retired with mechanical problems. But they've bounced back in style and have got into the banking here at the Isle of Wight, which, as we said earlier, has only developed here over the last two or three years. Martin Newnham and Dave Pavitt put a lot of work in here at the Isle of Wight, a lot of investment as well with all the shareholders. It's a very unique club here at the Small Brook Stadium, and the banking on that first and second turn, first and second for sidecars, third and fourth for Speedway when they go the other way around. Jackson and Blyde, the winners, Whiteland and Wales second, Hiscock and Bevis the third, and Edmonds and James pulling out there at the back. So Jackson and Blythe display great character. But watch him go off the outside. Let's see them go into turns one and two and hit that banking. Yeah, he's level pegging there with uh, uh, Paul Whiteland on the inside of him. But they got all tied up here. Here comes Nick Edmonds on the inside there, the key where he runs into the side of Paul Whiteland. Paul Whiteland was trying to close him down, but he didn't get there in time. That left a really big door open there for Gary Jackson and Carl Blythe to sweep round the outside and pull away for a great win. Here we see it once again, Jackson on the outside, it's Edmonds and Whiteland that now bash into each other as they get to the first turn. That was tight there, that allows Jackson to carry the speed through and onto a valuable three points. Good stuff from Jackson and Blythe, and let's get some reaction in the pits with Sophie. Yeah, Gary's very out of breath at the moment. <laughs> Well, obviously, that's really what you needed after the unfortunate incident with the first one. Was it your chain broke? Yeah, chain come off. Leading it, chain come off. Couldn't believe it. It was about a big panic to get it done, then straight out again. So I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you are. So obviously now you've got to keep getting the points, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, chances are we're going to miss out because we can't drop that many points, but we're going to keep going and give it a see what turns up. Well, two more wins, that's what you need. Oh, certainly, yeah, that'd be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck to you, thank you. Thank you. Go to Calvin and Nigel. I'll tell you what, Kelvin, we were just saying there, weren't we, that you, when you see the slow-motion replays of these guys, it's so spectacular, it takes your breath away when you look at the slow-motion replays of, of some of the boys just blasting around here in slow-mo. It is so spectacular, and, and it shows the, the courage with which these boys go for it. And Carl Pugh out here, the pizza shop owner. <laughs> I thought he'd be working tonight, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, well, Saturday night, you know, he's obviously given up a lot. This shows you how important it is here tonight, doesn't it? But we're Steve Smith and Carl Pugh. We're OK afterwards, anyway. I think he's got a few in the clubhouse afterwards for us, Kel. <laughs> Here's how it stands, then. You've got to get in that top four. That's what it's all about. To be fair, we've just seen a wonderful ride from Jackson and Blythe. They're in sixth place, but they've ridden more race than those above them. And this table will take shape as the evening develops here. Those in red, Stevie Smith and Carl Pugh. Number 15 partnership here. Stevie Smith from Sutton Coldfield in the West Midlands and Carl Pugh from Stourbridge in the Black Country, also in the West Midlands, by the way. 
heat number seven it is. Here is the lineup. Smith and Pugh off the inside. Leenberg, the Dutchman, and Williams off gate two in blue. Matthews and Stace go off gate three in white. And Laycock and Jody Donovan go off the outside in yellow. It's good stuff so far. Very, very fast. 1,000 cc, no brakes. It's the track racing gold trophy live from the Isle of Wight. And what a start from gate three. Ivor Matthews and Mick Stace have just powered away from the start in their first ride. They only got a third place, so they know that they need the points in this one. These two guys are Great Britain uh, joint champions, and they're showing champion form here as they move into lap two. Laycock and Donovan are currently second. Third place now, Stevie Smith and Carl Pugh. And at the back is Rulof Leenberg and David Williams. But a fine start from those two in white, Ivor Matthews and Mick Stace. Yeah, terrific start from gate three there, and it was important because Ricky Laycock and Jody Donovan showed really good form in their opening ride. So it was important for uh, Ivor Matthews to really rock it out of the start. He's holding a good line, Nigel. He's going up that bank and powering down that back straight and flying into the third corner. Ricky Claycott is trying everything he knows, but he just can't make inroads. Could it be Ivor Matthews' night? This is really good form. Well, the Isle of Man may be the home of TT racing, but the Isle of Wight is very much the home of Sidecar Speedway tonight. Kicking clear, Matthews and Stace on their way to what will be a very significant victory as they go into turns three and four for the final time, handling the machine superbly. Driver and passenger in perfect harmony. Second place there, Ricky Laycock and Jody Donovan and Steve Smith and Carl Pugh get that third spot with Lindbergh and Williams at the back. And that makes it very interesting because Matthews and Stace, to be fair, needed that win. As we said earlier, they started off with only a third place, the joint British champions, but they got a fine win there. As we said, the Isle of Wight, the home of Sidecar Speedway in Great Britain at the moment, but there is a big meeting coming up this Friday at the St Boniface Arena, one of Speedway's newest tracks at Plymouth. Great Britain and the rest of the world, this Friday the 11th of August at 7.30, Britain and the rest of the world at Plymouth. Good to see new tracks opening. There's a bit of doom and gloom about tracks that might be closing, but it's good to see new tracks opening as well. And all the best to the guys at Plymouth. Matthew and Stace, the winners. Laycock and Donovan, second. Smith and Pugh were third. And Leenberg and Williams trailing in at the back. But that was a vital win for Matthews and Stace off gate number three. It was, because with only four programme arrived, it seemed very important to make sure that you get amongst the points. And here it is, they're neck and neck as they went into the first turn. But Ivan Matthews is a hugely experienced campaigner and he really just took full advantage of the first turn. Laycock tries to run around the outside, but runs out of ruin as they come off it. They're neck and neck away from the tapes. As they enter the first turn, it allows Ivan Matthews just to pull that extra little bit clear. There you see Laycock right up the top of the bank, but he runs too wide and actually kills his speed as he comes off the turn. This race was all about Ivan Matthews, and he was in the, and he got the vital three points. Ivan Matthews is with Sophie. Yeah, Ivor, well done. Obviously, you needed those points. Yeah, a bit of a disappointing first ride, but uh, we know what we're capable of, so hopefully the, the night kicks in here. Was it just a bad start? You had the setup wrong? No, we just got boxed in on the first corner in the first one, and with it being a bit wet, couldn't see very well, so just one of those things, really. No, you're very pleased to be here, aren't you? Because you've been kind of one of the prime instigators to kind of get this meeting happening. Yeah, well, I, we've been working for a few years to get this class international. You know, we know the Aussies and New Zealanders, and there's, there's outfits in South... Africa and America that you know that aren't here so you know we think it could be a global sport and that's what we've been pushing for. Fantastic well we haven't spoken to a passenger yet so Mick will talk to you everyone's saying about how kind of well you guys are nutcases really. <laughs> oh no no you can be a bit nutty out there but if you you know it's a quite an interesting sport it's quite technical you've got to be in the right place at the right times. Well, we'll have to kind of have a catch up later then and find out how on earth it is you become a passenger and actually do this for the first time. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> All right best of luck to you guys Kevin and Nigel. Tell you what, Kel, Mick Stace is a big lad, isn't he? I wouldn't argue with him, would you? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I was chatting to him earlier on in the pits and just giving a few tips on how to do it, and uh, I believed every word he said to me. I'll tell you what, <laughs> if, if he says it's Christmas, it's Christmas. I believe him. <laughs> top four for the grand final, then, and the race for the top four will hot up as the evening progresses. Matthews and Laycock, four points apiece. They've had two rights each, though. Christopher and Trelaw, three points each, and watch that combination of Trelaw and Place dead when you see the, the surnames here that is the surname of the driver the driver and the passenger combination so coming up here in heat number eight Matthew Tittle and Sean Yates are in blue 
And I'm looking forward to the battle here between gate one, Stuart Firth and Darren Fleming, up against uh, Darren Chalor and Justin Playstead. Tyrrell and Yates here in the blue helmet colours from St Austell in Cornwall. But at the outside gate, Darren Chalor and Justin Playstead, they are the boys to watch and the boys to catch here, Kel. Yeah, I would agree with that. The passion just there, just getting off the outfits and just making sure that they line up in the right rut there. There you can see Justin Playstead really working hard to make sure that the outfit is in exactly the right spot. And a big race here in prospect between the two Aussie crews on the inside and out. Whoa! Flying start from Firth and Fleming off the inside, and they've got to the first turn, but coming round the outside, Chalor and Playstead, and now up the inside from last to third. Chalor and uh, Playstead uh, battling away up front, though, but uh, in third place, Grant Bond and Glenn Cox did well. But Chalor and Playstead, as we said earlier, the hot favourites going into this meeting. Chalor, the 37-year-old, Playstead, the 24-year-old. There's oh, terrific move from times. Grant Bond there. Up the inside, Glenn Cooks there. The pair there, they've made the same move on the opening lap to get through the third. Now they've forced their way into second spot. A very disappointing opening ride for these two. They've touched the tapes and got excluded. But once again, Darren Toulon and Justin Placid, mighty impressive out front. Let's make the point here, though. They are impressive and they're kicking on and looking totally dominant. But bear in mind, it's all about getting in the top four. I don't think there's any doubt that Chalor and Playstead, three times Australian champions, they'll get there. But it's all about a one-off grand final and anything can happen, Kelvin. Yeah, you're dead right. And uh, it's going to be about the start. But look at these two at the back here. They're having a real go. They're hanging on there. And uh, Stuart Firth and Darren Fleming, Fleming hanging on to third place. But Darren Chalor takes the win. A great ride there from Grant Bond. You've got to say after the disappointing opening ride where he was excluded, that was a terrific effort from him. Yeah, Bond and Cox teaming up superbly there, but they are the men of the moment. Darren Chalor and Justin Playstead, six points out of six. Deadly serious about this as well. A mid-chassis and a Yamaha FSR engine, FZR engine even, and they celebrate and acknowledge the applause of the fans. Remember... It's all well and good getting through to the final, unbeaten in your qualifying rides, but anything can happen in the final. We've seen punctures, you can see drop chains, anything can happen. You can't take your eyes off it. Trelaw and Playstead, the race winners. Bond and Cox for second, Firth and Fleming with third, Tyrrell and Yates at the back. But uh, Darren Trelaw and Justin Playstead, look at them, six out of six. Clear leaders, immaculate. Matthews and Stace, Firth and Fleming, Laycock and Donovan, four points. Now, the top four there have all had two races each. Coming up, Bickley and Benfield, Christopher and Coppy, Wilson and Owen, three points each from one ride. So they've still got a chance of getting into the top four after a couple of races. And what a magnificent race this was. Terrific ride here. Look on the inside there. Stuart Firth and Darren Fleming very nearly touched the tape. They were desperate to try to get away. They knew how important this race was, particularly with this man there, Darren Trelaw, and Justin Placed it coming from the outside. They made a clean getaway from the outside. They swept across in front of Stuart Firth into the first turn, and uh, they really did show terrific speed from there on. Stuart Firth there from then on actually was probably riding in the wrong spot on the track because look at Grant Bond. He was able to keep plugging away up this inside, off this turn here. Look at the extra speed he found there. Great. Get out there. of the way. Yeah, Glenn Cox and Grant <laughs> Bond there making up for lost time and force their way through into second spot. But Darren Talor, six out of six. Great stuff from him. Let's get some reaction to the action to heat number eight. And here's Sophie. Thank you, Nigel. Justin, another great win from you guys. Yeah, that was a good solid win. Uh, it's hard to come around the outside and you've got three good blokes on the inside. So uh, it was a good win, a good confidence boost and uh, their head's right now and uh, want to just continue and get into that final. Obviously, being a passenger, it's all about teamwork, isn't it, something like this? How does it work? Do you have signals that you do with each other? Oh, it's, it's what it is, is getting a feel for the bike as two people getting a feel of what the bike's doing. And I know what Darren's going to do when adjusting to the bike. And uh, if we work together, we all work as one, and then the bike will handle nicely, as you've just seen. And have you worked together for a long time? Uh, we've worked together for five years, but we uh, mesh pretty well from the start, so uh, we go well together. Yeah, because you seem to be kind of like there's a real strong team bond there, a lot of determination. Oh, there has to be, um, otherwise you won't succeed. And we motivate each other, and we know the job we've got to do, and uh, hopefully it just continues. All right, I can see you're taking the bike apart there, so I'll let you get on with it. Good luck to you. Back over to Calvin and Nigel. Thanks a lot, Soph. The Isle of Wight, Smallbrook Stadium, which first stage Conference League Speedway over 10 years ago. Gareth Rogers was one of the men that instigated that, and now Gareth working with Chris Van Straten up at Redcar, or Redcar, as they say in that part of the world. 
the South Tees Motorsport Park, another new speedway venue that's opened on Thursday nights in the Premier League, good to see. Let's hope that we see other new venues opening up at the likes of Birmingham and Exeter in the not too distant future. As uh, we hope British Speedway goes on to prosper. This is Sidecar Speedway though, 1000 CC, and it's the world final effectively, the biggest event in the Sidecar Speedway world. Now, Heat 9, Caven Hogan off the inside in red. Lloyd and Madley go off gate number two. Tolhurst and Whiteland Jr. off gate three in white. Cheatham and Williams off the outside in yellow and black. Three points for a win, two for second, one for third, 